This is Dr. Clayton Lane, and in this video, I'll be discussing knotless bank heart repair after shoulder dislocation. Shoulder dislocations account for about one-fourth of all shoulder injuries. They're more common in males, and 90% of these are anterior, where the ball of the humerus displaces to the front of the cup. Recurrent instability is as high as 94% in some studies, and the younger you are, the more likely it is to come out again. So surgical repair is often indicated for first-time shoulder dislocations. As we've talked about in previous videos, the shoulder joint is different than all other joints in the body. It's more analogous to a golf ball on a golf tee than it is a trailer to a trailer hitch. And by that I mean it has a very shallow cup and a relatively large ball. So it's very dependent on dynamic and static stabilizers to keep that ball centered on the cup. So here you can see an anatomical drawing showing the dynamic stabilizers of the shoulder or the rotator cuff which help keep that ball centered on the cup. So let's flip that diagram over so we can talk a little bit about the static constraints. Here you can see a diagram of that same golf ball and a golf tee upside down. You can see the static constraints which are the ligaments and the labrum of the shoulder. So when the shoulder dislocates, the anterior ligaments and labrum are torn away in what's termed a Bankart lesion. You can also see that the ball of the shoulder usually sustains an impaction injury posteriorly, which is called a hill sex lesion. In the emergency room or on the field, the shoulder will be reduced or put back in place. And then you're left with something like this, where the labrum is still torn away from the cup or glenoid, and this is termed the Bankart lesion. So what you're going to see in this video is how we will go in arthroscopically, place small anchors in the cup of the shoulder or the glenoid, and then pass these sutures through the ligaments of the shoulder, and ultimately cinch those down so that the ligaments will heal anatomically instead of in a medialized position. Now, what we're talking about today is a knotless repair. So the benefit of that is that instead of having a screw or an anchor in bone, it'll be an all suture pledgelet that's stuck in the bone. And then additionally, there will be no knots. Um, these knots are shown to have abrasive effects on the cartilage of the shoulder. And so in any case where we can get away without knots, that would be a better scenario. So here we are at arthroscopy performing our examination under anesthesia. You can see as I apply an anterior force to the shoulder, it easily dislocates. So the first thing we're going to do is free up the labrum and ligamentous complex and abrade the bone back to bleeding bone to help promote healing. Then we're going to pass our sutures through the labrum and ligamentous complex using special passing devices. Then I'll thread that suture back through my knotless mechanism, which you can see has already been embedded in the cup or glenoid of the shoulder. And then as I tension that down, it anatomically reduces our labrum and ligament to the front of the cup of the shoulder or glenoid. Typically, we'll place about three or four anchors, starting at six o'clock on the clock face, and then working our way anteriorly and superiorly, seven, eight, and nine o'clock. Here you can see our final repair. And then as I apply an anterior force to the shoulder, you can see that it no longer dislocates. You might be able to see whenever I place those side to side, the difference between before and after with that we've restored the stability of the shoulder. Also, you can see the difference in the old knotted construct and the knotless mechanism and how that would be less abrasive to the cartilage surfaces.